Good evening, students. Uh, today's NEET paper 2021, which was just nothing but you can say as an abstract from the NCRT part, where very fine lines have been picked up and the paper was being set over there. I'm just discussing the whole solution with you. Everyone, please make a note of it. The maximum temperature that can be achieved in a blast furnace is, now when you're talking about a blast furnace over there, we say blast of hot air is blown from the bottom of the furnace in the lower portion to give a temperature up to 2200 Kelvin. That's nothing but option four over there, what we have. That's the first one. Second one, <clears throat> the structure of beryllium dichloride in the solid state and in the vapor stasis. This is with respect to the P block. That is uh, the 11th standard part over there. What we have, sorry, not P block, the S block part. That's the alkaline earth metal part. So here, when we are talking for 52, beryllium dichloride, that is a chain structure in the solid state and a chlorobrit dimer structure. Is this clear? So that's the dimer structure what we have, which dissociates to give a linear monomer that's around 1200 Kelvin. So in the solid state, it is chain and it is basically over there, nothing but a chloro bridge structure over there. That's a dimer in the gaseous state. So that's one. So that's option three over there. What we have chain and dimer there. Then the next one, this compound with HBr in presence of benzoyl peroxide. So that's nothing but anti Markovnikov sedition. So an anti Markovnikov sedition, if you see this carefully, the 53rd one over there, everyone, and that's going to give you nothing but one bromo three methyl butane. That's option three there. Then next one, which of the following will react with Hinsberg's reagent to give a solid which dissolves in an alkali. Now Hinsberg reagent is nothing but benzene sulfonyl chloride. So has to be a compound which will be primary amine where primary amine reacts over there. And that primary amine, once it reacts over there, it gives a compound which is soluble. Why? Because there is a hydrogen atom directly attached to the nitrogen atom in the sulfonamide, which is strongly acidic. So compound has to be primary amine. So those compounds with the group NH2, that's answer is one over there. Then next part, 55. Noble gases are because of their inertness towards reactivity, identify the incorrect statement about them. Now the incorrect statement is they have weak dispersion forces. That's true. Large positive values of electron gain enthalpy. They are sparingly soluble in water. They have high melting and boiling point. That's the false one. Now why this is false? Because they generally have low, they are monoatomic. So as they are monoatomic, we will say that these are the compounds which will have nothing but weak dispersion forces. That is, they are liquefied at low temperature, which means they have low boiling points. So that incorrect has to be the fourth one. So 55, that answer is four. Then the compound which shows metamerism. Metamerism, that will be mainly shown by compounds which have R and R dash. So here the compound, what we are talking is mainly nothing but ethers. So that's going to be B. C4H10O, that is CnH2N plus 2O. So look at that, 56th one, metamerism shown by ethers. So 56 is two. Then 57, the major product obtained in dehydrohalogenation of 2-bromopentane is pentuene. The product is formed on the basis of, this is nothing but dehydrohalogenation is alcoholic KOH. So that's according to Satzar's rule what we short form as Sattu's rule over there, where we say from the alpha carbon, the halogen is removed and the beta carbon is removed. Uh, from the beta carbon, the hydrogen atom is removed, which has least number of H atoms so that you get an alkene, which is highly substituted. So answer is Sadzav's rule. So 57th one, look at that. With alcoholic KOH, you get a mixture of pentuene and pent one in according to Satsar's rule. So 57 is three, then 58. Now this is basically the Mayer's relationship. Cp minus Cv is equal to R. That is a difference between the heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume is nothing but the molar gas constant that is R. We have different values of R. 
8.314 in terms of joules per Kelvin per mole. In terms of liter atmosphere, 0.082 liter atmosphere per Kelvin per mole. And in terms of calories, our value is 1.987, which is abbreviated as two calories per Kelvin per mole over there. So 58 is four over there. So that's 58, CP minus CV is R. 59th one, what is the IUPAC name of the compound? Acetone reacts with Grignard's reagent. Ketones plus Grignard's reagent gives you a three degree alcohol. All right. So here, if you see acetone, look at this carefully. Acetone plus ethyl magnesium bromide, add the carbon atoms to the carbonyl carbon, the alkyl group will join of the Grignard's reagent. And on acid hydrolysis, the carbonyl group will get over there converted into OH. So the answer is two there. That's two methyl butan to all. So 59 is two. Then 60th, the P of KB of dimethylamine and P of K of acetic acid are given. The correct option for the P of H of dimethyl ammonium acetate is now dimethyl ammonium acetate is nothing but a salt of weak acid and weak base. Dimethylamine is a weak base. Acetic acid is a weak acid. So for this, we have a direct formula. Look at that. For weak acid, weak base, P of H is equal to seven plus half P of K minus P of KB. So that when you calculate the 60th, that answer comes as 7.75. So that's option A for the 60th. 61. Aspirin and paracetamol belongs to the class of narcotic analgesics. That's a false one. They are non-narcotic analgesics. And morphine and heroin are non-narcotic. That is also false. They are narcotic analgesics. So here both the statements are false. So 61 is four over there. So that's the part. 61 is option four over there. Okay. Then 62. Which of the following reaction is the metal displacement reaction correct over there? Now the metal displacement reaction is correct with respect to the D1, that is Cr2O3 with aluminum. Aluminum will reduce chromium from its metal oxide. This is basically nothing but Goldsmith, you know, thermite process what we have in the extraction of aluminum, that part we have. So 62 answer is going to be four over there. Okay. So now with respect to this, let's try to catch 62 now. Look at that. It's a metal displacement reaction also called as the thermite process or the goldsmith aluminum thermite process because aluminum has affinity for water, for oxygen, sorry, and can reduce the metal oxides like that of Cr2O3 or of Fe2O3. That's in the nothing but the extraction of aluminum part. That's 62. Then 63, RBC deficiency. Is this clear? That's the anemic part. That is because of vitamin B12. So 63 is three over there. So that's in what we have as the biomolecules part of vitamins that is due to vitamin B12 that's called as nothing but pernicious anemia. That is the RBC deficiency in hemoglobin. So 63 is the third one. 64, the molar conductance are given of NaCl, HCl and sodium acetate. You want the molar conductance of acetic acid. So this is as per the Kolroche's law. When you calculate, look at that. <clears throat> molar conductivity at infinite dilution of acetic acid is molar conductivity at infinite dilution of HCl plus sodium acetate minus NaCl. So when you do that part, that comes as 390.71. So 64 is 4. 64. Then with respect to the match the columns part over there, PCL5, that's a sp 3 dehybridized. That's a trigonal bipyramidal geometry. So you have you know, A over there is nothing but four over there. So out of the options, SF6 is a regular octahedral geometry. BRF5, that's a distorted sp 3 d 2 hybridized, what we call a square pyramidal. And BF3 is a regular trigonal planar geometry, SP2 hybridized. So here in the 65th one, when I'm talking, 65, answer is going to be three. PCL5, sp 3 d regular. SF6, sp 3 d 2 regular. BRF5, because of one lone pair, according to VSEPR, it is square pyramidal structure. 
and BF3 is sp2 trigonal planar. So 65 is 3. Then, <clears throat> which of the following polymers is prepared by addition polymerization? Addition polymerization is nothing but Teflon. Along with Teflon, we also have nothing but in addition polymerization. That's polythene, high density and low density polythene, as well as we have nothing but polyacrylonitrile, that is PAN. All are examples of addition polymerization. So 66 is 3. Teflon prepared by addition polymerization of tetrafluoroethene. And also two more examples. Polythene, low and high density and PAN. 67th one. Now, this was basically a facts part. In the 14 types of Bravia's lattice, how many have <clears throat> BCC as their unit cells? All right. Apart from the primitive nature, how many BCC we have? So in this category, if you see, we have three of them. The cubic has a, 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 a with respect to <clears throat> cubic, you have primitive as well as you have BCC. Tetragonal also has BBC, uh, BCC, sorry. And, oct and orthorhombic also has body centered cubic structure. So you have total three Bravia's lattice, which has BCC lattice. So that's option two. 67 is two. Then zirconium and hafnium have similar size. That's because of lanthanoid contraction. In fact, there are four pairs <clears throat> of lanthanoid. Due to lanthanoid contraction, there are four pairs of chemical twins zirconium, hafnium, niobium, tantalum molybdenum tungsten, technetium rhenium. 68, that's one. Four pairs of chemical twins due to lanthanoid contraction. Zirconium afnium, niobium tantalum, molybdenum tungsten, and technetium <coughs> rhenium. Then, 69th one. 69th, it says, which of the following is correct with respect to who's shown by Tyndall effect? Tyndall effect is generally shown by a colloidal solution. So the colloidal solution is starch which is a negatively charged sol solution. Sol, colloidal solution of solid dispersed in a liquid. So 69 is one. So that's negatively charged sol solution that is starch. Then 70th one, this is one of the sol examples from structure of an atom. If anybody has gone through the sol examples, this part is there. Particular station of All India Radio, Frequency of 1368 kilohertz, wavelength, lambda has to be found out, whereas they have given C over there. Direct substitution formula over there. Kilohertz part is all you convert into hertz, and one hertz is one CPS, that is cycles per second. So 70th, if you see, lambda is C by nu. Velocity of light, 3 into 8 meter per second, 1368 kilohertz. That is nothing but also just hertz will be one hertz is one CPS cycles per second. So that's per second. So that answer is 219.3 meters. 70th is 3. 71. Compound contains 78% by weight of carbon and remaining is hydrogen. So the right option for the empirical formula, that's going to be nothing but what we have as A. That is the methyl group over there. Okay. Now here, how do we get this part? Look at that. The moles of carbon Percentage is given, so 78 by 12 moles of hydrogen. So then calculate the simplest ratio. So one carbon and you have 3.38 hydrogen. Now one carbon and 3.38. So approximately the empirical formula sets as CH3. <clears throat> All right, that's one. Then next one for the reaction A to B, enthalpy of reaction is given. Matlab delta H is negative, so it's an exothermic reaction. Enthalpy of activation is put up. The correct potential energy diagram. Now for exothermic reaction, we all know enthalpy of the product is less than the enthalpy of the reactants. Reactants are with more enthalpy. So it's a mountain coming down if anybody remembers for exothermic. So for exothermic, enthalpy of reactant is more than the enthalpy of product. So that's option four because in A, the curves are equal. In B, that's an endothermic curve. C, a third one is also endothermic. In fact, only it's the fourth one where the products are associated with less heat. So here, 72, answer is 4 over there. Delta H of reaction is given, that's exothermic. Activation energy is given. So we know for exothermic, reactants have more enthalpy than the products. So the products are more stable at low temperature. 
And that's why it's a curve coming down over there. Then 73 over there, the correct sequence of bond enthalpy. Now bond enthalpy here is very simple over there. That's nothing but the third option. That is methyl fluoride, less than methyl chloride, then methyl bromide and iodide because down the group with respect to halogens, F, C, L, B, R, I, as the size increases, the bond length will increase. Bond length increases, the bond polarity also decreases. So due to two reasons, the bond enthalpy of methyl iodide would be lesser over there, okay? So 73 is the third one. Sorry, that's the fourth one. That's FCL, yeah. So FCL, BR, and I, I think there is some misprint in this part. Option-wise, it's the fourth option what we have. There's some misprint happened over there. So one minute. So this has to be the fourth one that is methyl fluoride less is greater, sorry. Methyl fluoride is, does a mis, uh, methyl fluoride has got more bond enthalpy than chloride, than bromide and iodide over there. The reason is simple because of bond length and bond polarity. So 73 is four. So that's the part. That's the bond enthalpy due to bond length and bond polarity. 74th one, which of the following method can be used to obtain high purity metal, which is a liquid at room temperature? Answer is distillation. That is nothing but, you know, high purity metal, which is liquid. So metal like mercury, is this clear? And zinc, they are prepared by distillation process because they are the low boiling metals. So 74 is one over there. Then 75, right option for the number of tetrahedral and octahedral voids in a hexagonal primitive cell. Hexagonal, we all know number of atoms are six. So if the number of atoms are six, number of octahedral voids are N, tetrahedral voids are double of it. So there'll be 12 tetrahedral voids and there will be six octahedral voids. So 75 is two over there. See that part? HCP lattice, number of atoms are six. So that's the breakup. Hexagon up and down. So the 12 corners of the hexagon, one touches six others. So 12 into one by six, plus three in the center, not associated with any one, and plus half into two. That is the one at the center of the hexagon above, one at the center of the hexagon below. So that's half into two. So total comes as six. So octahedral voids are six, tetrahedral voids are 12. So answer is two, two there. So 75, then 76. Among the following alkaline earth metals, the one which is covalent and soluble in organic solvents, that's nothing but we all know beryllium chloride because of the small size and high ionization enthalpy, it shows more polarizing power. That's the Fajan's rule. Smaller the size of the cation, more is the covalent character present in it. 76 is 2. So that's the part over there. So as these compounds are covalent, they easily get hydrolyzed. Then 77 over there, tritium, a radioactive isotope emits which of the following particles? Now tritium, we write it as 3T1, N by P ratio is more than one. So whenever the N by P ratio is more than one, we say neutron gets transformed into a proton and it ejects out an electron. So it's basically a beta decay. So that's going to be a beta particle. That's a beta decay from the nucleus. So 77 is over there, nothing but three. Look at that, tritium, N by P ratio is more than one. So neutron gets transformed into a proton. Proton stays inside the nucleus and it ejects out an electron. So look at that reaction. Tritium gets transformed into an isotope of helium because proton is added in the nucleus. So atomic number increases by one and plus it ejects out an electron. That's a beta decay. So you will have radiation in the atmosphere around it. So that's 77.3. Then 78, correct structure of 2,6 dimethyl deck 4 ene. If you see over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 2 and 6, 2 branches. So 2,6 dimethyl, skeleton of 10, deck, double bond between 4 and 5, so least number on 4, so deck 4 ene. So 78 is 3. So that's the part, 78, that's three. Then 79, BF3 is planar and electron deficient. Hybridization and number of molecules. BF3 is planar, that's sp2 hybridized. 
and boron has six electrons around it because three bonds, right? So it's sp2 and six. So 79 is one. That's the first part. We have three sp2 and six electrons because of three bonds. So this also BF3, if anybody remembers, classified as an example of incomplete octet. Then, 80th one, choose the correct option with respect to the Boyle's law part. Boyle's law, at constant temperature, pressure is inversely proportional to volume. In other words, the product of PV remains constant. So here, if you look at the graphs, this is also one of the graphs which is printed in the textbook. The same graph, it is just cut, copy, pasted over there if you see carefully. Now, that graph is nothing but the option 3 over there. Look at that. Not option three, option two over there with respect to the temperature part. So according to Boyle's law at constant temperature, we say pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So these are basically called as the isotherms, what we have. The product of PV remains constant at 200, 400, and 600 Kelvin. So 80th is two. So the temperatures is what need to see, 200, 400, and then 600. All right, then. 81, the dihedral angle for the least stable conformer of ethane. There are two conformers, eclipsed and staggered. Eclipsed, the two atoms come on the same plane. The dihedral angle is zero degree over there for the least stable one. 60 degree is what we call as gauche and 180 degree is anti. 81 is two. The dihedral angle for the conformer that is in the eclipsed form, that will be zero degree. So that's how you write there in the projection formula. So the between the two H atoms, the angle will be taken as zero. 82, the acid strength order is given. Okay. It says as the size of the elements increases down the group, bond strength decreases. Yes, because the size becomes bigger. Acid strength increases. That's correct. In the light, you will say, choose the correct statement. Now in this category, very simple, both the statements are true. So 82 answer has to be three. So look at that. Yes, so both the statements are true over there. Okay. Acid strength is also correct. So this has to be three actually. Both the statements are correct over here. Then the following solution is prepared by dissolving 10 grams glucose 250 ml in 250 ml water. 10 gram urea in water and 10 gram sucrose in two, all of the volume is the same 250 ml. They want the decreasing order of osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is pi. All colligative properties are inversely proportional to the molecular weights. So whose molecular weights is least will have the highest osmotic pressure. Urea, molar mass 60, then sec, uh, glucose 180 and sucrose 342. So that's it. So you have P1 for glucose, P2 for, so P2 will have maximum over there. So there is one option with P2, P1, and this, that's option three there. 83 is third one. So all are non-electrolytes. So colligative properties inversely proportional to molar mass. That's why the option 83 will be three over there. Okay. Then 84, Ethylene diamine tetraacetate, that is EDTA 4 minus. That ion is, we all know that's a hexadentate ligand where we have two attachments from nitrogen and four from oxygen as the uh, lone pair donors. Look here, please, the structure 84th one EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. Two attachments or two lone pairs from nitrogen and from the CH2 COO minus, that O minus of all four. That's the one that will be the, what I've shown with the red arrows. Those are the lone pair donors. So 84 is three. 85, the incorrect statement. Lanthanides are good conductors of heat and electricity. Actinides are highly reactive, especially when they are finely divided. These are all the lines picked up. That's also is a true statement. Actinide contraction is greater. Yes, because of poor shielding, that is also true. And most of the trivalent lanthanoid ions are colorless in the salt. Lanthanides are good conductors. That is also true. So the incorrect statement is fourth one. They are not colorless in the solid state. They are the ones which are mainly colored there. So 85th one, that's four. Look at that. They are highly reactive when finely divided. Lanthanide contraction greater due to poor shielding of 5F electrons. 
lanthanoids are good conductors and most of the lanthanoid ions are colored both in the solid and in their aqueous solution so the incorrect option is the fourth one where it says it's colorless so 85 is four then 86 now section b what we start toluene plus chromyl chloride that's etard reaction gives x and then it gives finally on acid hydrolysis benzaldehyde so they're asking you x over here the intermediate compound that's going to be nothing but the third one so you have 86 as three that's etard reaction section b there with chromyl chloride it forms the intermediate that is benzene ch ocroh cl2 the whole twice which on acid hydrolysis gives you benzaldehyde so 86 is three then Then, 87, the reagent R is, now this is 246 tribromoaniline with NaNO2, it forms a disonium salt and disonium salt on what will give you respective nothing but 135 tribromobenzene. So what have you done? Disonium salt is reduced to actually there's a H coming over there. Okay. So it's basically the reduction of the disonium salt to hydrogen atom. So here, what are the reagents that can be used? Answer is for ethyl alcohol, or we can also use HPO3 over there, what we have. I'll show you there are two reagents possible. So look at that, 87, that's the part. So you can have either ethanol or not HPO3, sorry, H3PO2 plus water. So any one can be used. It's basically replacement by H. So you replace the disonium group by a H over there. That's why the entire disonium salt goes out as nitrogen and HCl. So two things can be used for the replacement, either ethanol or H3PO2 and water. So 87 is four. Then 88, which of the following is non-polar in nature? That's nothing but antimony pentafluoride. Now why it is antimony pentafluoride? Because look here, 88 one, it's non-polar due to equal sharing of electrons between the atoms over there. And elements in plus five, we all know they have more polarizing power than plus three. So the covalent character of the bonds is more in penta halides. That's why as you know, antimony pentachloride is gonna be nothing but what we can call as non-polar in nature. So 88 is one. Which of the following pair, which of the following is not isoelectronic. Normally questions are of all isoelectronic. Here they are saying not isoelectronic. Now not isoelectronic, if you observe that Fe2 plus Fe is 26, 26 minus 2, 24, Mn is 25, 25 minus 2, 23. So that's going to be option B there. So 89 is 2. Clear? Fe 26 minus 2 because 2 plus, so 24, Mn 25 minus 2, so 23. Then 90th one, now this was really a good one from uh, environmental pollution. Those who have read properly, they only will be able to get it. Is it clear? First one, SO2 plus O2 gives SO3. Many feel acid rain character. Acid rain is formation of H2SO4. Formation of SO3 is tropospheric pollution. So the A1 is 4. Now if you see in the options, A4 may a key option better. That is the first one. Second one, OH and Cl free radicals. That's nothing but what we have as the ozone depletion, the free chlorine radicals. Third one is C, that is acid rain. That is the depletion of what we have also as Taj Mahal, that's calcium carbonate, the marble reacts with the acid rain and it is getting converted to calcium sulfate over there. So that's the part, so, so C is one. And the last one, that is what we have is nothing but formation of smog over there. So 90th is the first one. That's the 90th one. See that part. SO2 to give SO3, tropospheric pollution, ozone depletion, free chlorine radical, calcium carbonate with H2SO4, that's the destruction of marble, that's acid rain, that's of Taj Mahal, and NO2 giving you NO plus oxygen, that's smog over there. So 90th is one. 91. 
this was also one from the exercise questions from states of matter all right these are all similar very same questions only what they have changed is the variables otherwise the whole thing is same total pressure in a mixture of 4 gram oxygen and 2 gram hydrogen in a total volume of 1 liter at 0 degree centigrade will be this is directly at the moles pv is nrt that's it so look at that pv is nrt so p is n rt by v number of moles of oxygen 4 by 32 0.125 Moles of hydrogen, 2 grams. Molar mass of hydrogen is 2, so 2 by 2, 1. Total moles, 1.125. So pressure is, look at that carefully. 1.125 into 0 0.082, that's liter atmosphere. Volume is 1 liter. 0 degrees, that's 273 Kelvin. Answer is 25.18 atmosphere. So 91 is the first one. All right. Next, sodium propionate with NaOH and dash gives you ethane. This is nothing but decarboxylation reaction where we use soda lime. So it's NaOH plus CaO what we use. So the missing part over there is, so that's going to form over there nothing but ethane. So the alkyl group CH3, CH2 picks up the H of NaOH and it forms a byproduct salt over there that will be sodium carbonate and CH3, CH2 will pick up the H to form ethane. So 92 is 1. Sodium propionate with soda lime gives you ethane plus sodium carbonate. One carbon less, which is given out in the form of sodium carbonate using soda lime. That's 92 is 1. 93, the molar conductivity of 0 0.007 molar acetic acid is given. What is the dissociation constant of acetic acid? This question you shouldn't solve also looking at the four options. Why? If you remember in ionic for weak acid, weak base, K of acetic acid is 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 5. KB of NH4OH is also 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 5. So the closest option of 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 5, that's going to be only 1 over there. That's option 1 over there. 1.75 into 10 raised to minus 5. Should be technically 1.8. Calculation also comes to that only, but the closest answer is that. So look here, 93, how do you do that part? What they have done first of all, they have given the molar conductivity means you have capital lambda. They have given you the lambda naught of acetate and H plus ion. So you can calculate molar conductivity at zero concentration. Then we have alpha. Alpha is lambda upon lambda naught and Ka formula, dissociation constant, Oswald's process. K is equal to Oswald's uh, dilution law, if you remember. K is equal to alpha square C upon one minus alpha. Substitute alpha is lambda upon lambda naught. So we get, look at that carefully. Alpha is lambda upon lambda naught. K is alpha square C upon 1 minus alpha. So it's lambda square into C upon lambda naught into lambda naught minus lambda. You substitute, the exact answer comes as 1.84 into 10 raised to minus 5. So 93 over there, if you see, yes, the closest one is option 1 over there. Okay. Next, the slope of Arrhenius plot that is ln k versus 1 by d for first order is minus 5 into 10 raised to 3 Kelvin. That's the slope, S. You want the Ea where the R is given. This is a very direct answer. Slope is equal to minus Ea by R. So Ea is nothing but slope into R. That's it. Just one liner. 94. All right. LNK versus 1 by T. That's a straight line for first order. Slope is minus Ea by R. So that slope is minus 5 into 10 raised to 3. So that minus minus is cancelled. Ea is 5 into 10 raised to 3 into 8.314. So that answer is joules converted to kilojoules, 41.57 kilojoules. So 94 is 3. All right. 95. For an irreversible expansion of an ideal gas under isothermal conditions. Isothermal condition, temperature remains constant. So delta U is 0. Delta S total, that is delta S of system plus surrounding is not 0 for irreversible. Is that clear? So here the option is 1 over there. Delta U is 0 because temperature is constant. Internal energy is a function of only temperature. So delta U is 0 for isothermal. But for irreversible expansion, delta is total. That is system plus surrounding will not be 0. So 95 is 1. For irreversible expansion under isothermal condition, delta U is 0. Delta is total is delta S of system plus delta S of surrounding, which is not equal to zero. So one, 96th one, 
the correct option for the value of vapor pressure of a solution at 45 degrees centigrade with benzene to octane in the molar ratio of 3 is to 1. They have given the vapor pressure of pure benzene and pure octane. People, this is Dalton's law. Total pressure is nothing but the pressure of benzene, the partial pressure of benzene plus partial pressure of octane. And partial pressure is, partial pressure of any component is vapor pressure of pure component multiplied by its mole fraction. All right. So that's all we do. So 96, observe there. Look at that. Pressure total, that's partial pressure of benzene plus partial pressure of octane. Partial pressure is P0 of benzene, that is vapor pressure of pure benzene into mole, mole fraction. They have given the mole ratio, that is 3 is to 2, so 3 by 5 plus same way we have vapor pressure of octane. We add the two, that comes as 336 millimeters. So 96 is 1. 98. Now in this, you have to calculate the unpaired electrons with respect to the ligands. Now cyanide strong field ligand, so it will pair up. Water weak field ligand, so it won't pair up. So on that basis, you calculate. So look at that. 97 first one, Fe Cn6, Fe is plus 3. Cyanide will pair up, so you'll have one unpaired electron. So for the first one, it's 1.73 BM, Bohr's magneton. Fe H2O6, 3 plus. That's hexa aqua iron 3. Fe is plus 3. Water weak field, so it will not pair up. So 5 unpaired electrons. So it's root 35. That's 5.92. Then Fe Cn6, 4 minus. There Fe is plus 2. So cyanide will pair up. So no unpaired electron. So no magnetic moment. Mu is 0. And last Fe H2O6, 2 plus. Fe is in plus 2 state. Weak field ligand. So it won't pair up. So four unpaired electrons, so root 24, that is 4.9. So the correct option is two. That's 97. 98th one. Now this is a very direct one. Benzene with carbon monoxide and HCl in presence of CuCl or anhydrous AlCl3. That's gatterman kosh formulation. RCOCH3 plus NOx is a haloform reaction because of three replaceable alpha H. Acid plus alcohol in presence of conch H2SO4 is esterification. And last one, RCH2COH with halogen in presence of red phosphorus. That's nothing but hell bollard zelensky reaction. So if I'm talking about 98, I missed out 98, sorry. I just went to 99 directly. Sorry, sorry. 96. Okay. This compound with NABH4 is sodium borohydride will only reduce the carbonyl group. So the ketonic group will be reduced to secondary alcohol or aldehyde hoga, it will reduce to primary alcohol. That's it. That's all it forms. Now this formation will not be there. So in this case, if I have to tell you the option wise, it can't be A because in A they have shown the OH also with it. So there is only one option which makes sense over there. That is option two there where the ketonic group has converted to secondary alcohol, rest everything remains the same there. So 98 is 2 there. If you want to reduce both, that is going to be the ester part as well as the ketonic group both, then we have to use over there nothing but molecular hydrogen. All right. So 98 is 2. So that's the part. Sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride will only reduce the carbonyl group. 99, I just told you. So 99, if you see, that's option two there. And the last one, which of the following arrangements given in the sequence is not strictly according to the properties? Ammonia, phosphine, arsenic hydride, antimony hydride. It says increasing acidic character. True. Is this clear? Ammonia is the strongest is the strongest base over there. So the acidic character will increase as one goes down, correct? Carbon dioxide, silica, SNO2, and PbO2, increasing oxidizing power. This is also true because lead will be in plus four. Plus four is the highest state. So it's the strongest oxidizing agent. So increasing oxidizing power, that's also true. Then HF, HCl, HBr, HI. This is also true, increasing acid strength. Last one, water, H2S, H2, uh, H2SE, H2T. Now it says increasing P of K value. This order is correct. So if this order is true, 
H2T is a stronger acid. So stronger the acid, stronger the acid, larger the K value and lower is the P of K. So increasing P of K, P of K cannot increase. So last one is false. So answer is four there. So hundred is four. All are fine in the last one. The order is correct, but then it cannot be increasing P of K. It has to be over there, nothing but decreasing P of K. Clear? All right.